Hey guys, uh, welcome back. In this video, we will look into um, a very interesting topic uh, concerning ASAs. Uh, we are going to dwell into the various kind of VPN configurations which we can do on a ASA. All right. Um, so if you look at this screen right now, this is the topology which we'll be using for all our exercises. We will be actually looking into three different types of VPNs. Um, the IK V1 VPN, which we are going to establish between R3 and ASA1 and the IK V2 VPN would be established between ASA2 and the 7200s and uh, uh, we will finally you know conclude by establishing a um, you know building a SSL VPN uh, which is going to be a web VPN right and uh, that's going to be between the PC which is over here and the ASA1 right so let's uh, get started uh, we have already seen VPNs in detail earlier and we have also seen uh, ASAs uh, you know we have seen uh, all the various kind of features, various capabilities of the ASA. Uh, we are going to mash all the learnings which we have done till now into this topology, right? So to start with, uh, let me actually show you the topology which I have built on the on my GNS3, right? There is just a switch over here, and I've connected all the devices which are needed for my topology around it uh, for various ports. And uh, how do I convert this into something which looks like this? I'm going to use VLANs, right? We have done that since uh, uh, since the first exercise right so uh, yeah let's get started right so let's start configuring uh, let's put the switch configuration to start with right because which is the first thing we always start what do we do on switch um, we will create the VLAN so if you look at R1 so I'm gonna just explain to you uh, maybe I'm gonna paste all the configuration on my screen and then I'm gonna explain it to you because uh, it's pretty much the same what we have done till now. I don't want to waste time on this Right, so this is going to be the configuration on my switch now. Let me explain a couple of them here um, If you look at the interface uh, 0 slash 1 and 1 slash 1, right? So these are the two interfaces on the switch uh, If you look at the screen here um, Those it's this is the interface 0 slash 1 and 1 slash 1, right? And uh, what are we intending to do? Um, that interface of the switch should be in VLAN 10, right? Because those two interfaces basically correspond to the inside interface of ASA and uh, the interface of the router, right? And both of them have to be in VLAN 10, right? And that's the reason we are basically putting uh, those two interfaces of the switch also in, in VLAN 10, right? So we are doing the same thing for the rest of the um, ex uh, rest of the interfaces as well. Right, the VLAN 20 basically corresponds to um, you know uh, this interface. Right, the VLAN 20 is going to be uh, the outside interface of ASA, uh, as well as um, uh, what we do here is if you see there is 0 0.100 and 0 0.23, they are basically the sub interfaces of R2. So from R2, if you look here, there's there's just going to be one single physical interface, and we are gonna do sub interfaces on the same interface you know to uh, achieve our goals right and uh, that is why because we have one single interface running multiple VLANs we have considered that interface to be a trunk interface right the rest of the interfaces uh, are pretty much the same we have VLANs running and you can make um, uh, you, you can basically understand it just by looking at the topology so we have basically converted each of these interfaces um, and um, um, you know we have put the VLANs on them and that's how it appears right so this is basically the configuration that would go on the switch okay now let's um, um, continue with this so once we are done with all the switch configuration right what do we do let's start with probably the R1 right the R1 is over here if you look at the diagram here the first router is my R1 and let me put some basic uh, IP addresses and loop at loopback addresses on my R1 right uh, let me do that now let me paste that on the screen I'm still not doing anything related to ASA yet. I'm just doing uh, the basic routing to set up the topology, right? And this is all uh, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, self-explanatory, right? The, you can see the interface here. I'm putting 10.11.11.1, loopback interface of 1.1.1. And I'm also enabling uh, uh, Telnet on it. And I'm also having a um, default route towards my internet. So you can assume my R2 router to be like the internet router, right? So you can assume this part of the network uh, to be one branch or one site of a probably organization and this one to be another site, right? So 
uh, these are like the two sides and this is again the outside outside of external connections or outside the internet so this is the internet over here and this could be any uh, pc or any router in the internet space right so uh, like i was telling uh, what i did just now was i configured my r1 I, I basically built the configuration for my r1 right and it's pretty simple i am uh, uh, having the ip addresses on the interfaces and i also put in a default route towards my asa right 10.11.11.10 is my asa good so once we are done with r1 we will uh, go one step above and uh, we will do my asa1 right so on asa1 we will have to configure my inside interface my outside interface and probably put a default route towards r2 because r2 is the internet right so let me do that i have it ready over here right so this is again pretty much the same i have the gigabit 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 0 these are the two interfaces this is the inside interface the ip address on it outside interface the ip address on this and we have a default route towards r2 right looks pretty good uh, so that's done with r2 what do we do next let's probably go and do my uh, uh, r3 right no, sorry i i just finished uh, asa i should do my r2 my bad so on r2 like i said what we are going to do is we are going to put the ip addresses on all the three uh, interfaces but these are the sub interfaces right uh, but other than that everything remains the same okay so uh, we will do that and probably we will put a default route um, to reach my uh, this network to reach my asa2 i will have to put a default route or static route on uh, uh, r2 telling that uh, you know yeah it's going to be a static route because we don't have any routing running here we need to use static routes so if r2 basically wants to asa2 reach asa2 i think it won't be possible right now so we are going to put a uh, you know static route saying if you want to reach that go through 192. Dot uh, 1.23.3 which is going to be r3 right so that's going to be my uh, r2 so let's put that here yeah so my r2 is uh, good i think uh, my r2 basically starts from here my bad okay so you can see that we have uh, three interfaces uh, three sub interfaces uh, 0 0.20 0 0.100 and 0 0.23 and the corresponding IP addresses have been put on them 192.120.2 because it is in the 20 VLAN. This is 192.100.2, which is basically uh, this interface, and the last one is 192.1.23.3. Right? So that's the three interfaces, and we also have a default route, like I told earlier. So once we are done with the R3, probably let me have this here, I think it's easier. Right? So once we are done with R3, what we are going to do is let's go and do probably my uh, let's probably do these two later let's do asa2 right so on asa2 again it's going to be pretty much simple we are going to do the same thing which we did on asa1 uh, this is going to be my outside interface now right and this is going to be my inside interface and i'm also going to put a default route pointing towards the internet so which is the next stop so it's going to be r3 i'm going to say the default route for this device is going to be r3 right so i'm going to do that paste this here right so this is your asa2 like I said, we have the outside interface, inside interface, and a default route. Okay. And the last router here is basically my R4. Right. So let's do R4. R4 is again pretty much the same. Uh, two IP, we're going to put an IP address, loopback address, maybe, and uh, we're going to put a default route towards my internet. I need to have something towards, going towards my internet. So I'm going to put the default route towards my ASA. Right. Because that is in the path of the internet. So 10.40.40.10 is .40 what we will have for r4 okay makes sense right so this is the ip address on the interface and this is the default route beautiful i think that looks good now the two things which we left here on the left side so we're going to do that uh, to start with uh, 7200 or i call myself or i or i basically call this as the r5 router uh, on this what do we do okay so on this we will uh, uh, have to Yeah, so uh, on R5, right, um, give me a minute, let me think. Yeah, so on R5 for now, I think let's go and basically configure uh, the um, IP address, right? The IP address of the interface, yeah, let's put that.
So now let's put the IP address of the interface. There might be a def static route which I might have to put on R5, but let's see that later. But for now, I think uh, putting an IP address should be more than enough. So let's do that. So as you see, this is going to be my R5 or the 7200 basically and uh, it's going to be just IP address 192.1.100.72 because that's the subnet here, right? So I think we're done with R5 as well. What is left is my PC. Okay, so you see a small PC here. Uh, yeah, so that PC is also present in my GNS3. If you look here, there is a PC over here. And what I've done is I have my uh, uh, Windows machine running here, right? So let me do this. Right, so I have my Windows PC running over here and what I have done is I have made my Windows PC to appear on my GNS3, right? And I have uh, done that using the cloud interface. So that's pretty simple. I think you can probably try as well. Probably you can write to me if you are not able to figure that out. I could do a video on that, but it's pretty simple. You have to just use the cloud interface and you uh, need to uh, uh, add the cloud interface. You need to add the same network adapter of your uh, VM. So whichever uh, you know network adapter this particular VM is using, I will have to uh, you know add the same network adapter to GNS3, and uh, that way you can connect your uh, you know, logical or the simulated GNS topology to physical devices, which is my own PC here, right? So I've connected that as well. Right? So this is going to be a PC where I'll do a lot of the testings, and uh, so that is good. So we have basically covered almost uh, everything. Right. Let me just uh, check if we have done everything. So we have switch, we have R1, we have R2, we have um, R3, do we have R3? Okay, we have R2. Okay, we have not done R3. So we have R4, R5, we have ASA2 and ASA1 as well. Surprising we don't have R3. So what is R3? Right, so R3 is going to be uh, over here. Let's see. Okay, so this is R3. So on R3 again, um, we are basically going to do uh, the IP address configuration, right? I'm going to configure the IP addresses uh, on both my interfaces. One is in the VLAN 23 and another one is the VLAN 30. And I'll also put a default route towards my internet router, which is 192.1.23.2, this interface. So let's do that. That's going to be R3. Okay, let's see. This is R1, this is R2, and this is R3. Great, so that looks good. I think we are ready to put this basic configuration on my devices. So till now we have not done anything related to VPNs. So we're just setting it up. So let's start with putting the switch configuration. Okay, there seems to be a small issue with the, uh, uh, okay, I think I did not copy it the right way, my bad, I'll probably restart this switch, give me a minute. Okay, this is up. I think I missed a keyword range here and that's why it gave me an error. Okay, let me copy the entire thing now. I think it should work now. Let me go inside the configuration interface and there you go. Okay, so that's good. How do you check the VLANs? Probably let me clear the screen a bit. Uh, show VLAN brief should do it. So there you go, we have uh, everything set up okay so this vlan 4 is something which i created by mistake otherwise we have uh, vlan 10 having two of the interfaces vlan 20 having one of it 23 um, okay so 20 has one and uh, 23 has one and 30 has two of them 100 has two of them and 40 has two of them okay great 
we can also check our uh, trunk interface if it is up the r2 basically right so that looks good great so switch is done let's move on to my r1 so r1 is done let's go down to r2 let's finish all the routers once Okay. R2 is done. Let's finish R3 next. Okay, that's done too. Let's do R4, the last router on the top. Right? And R5, which is. Um, here. Okay. Okay, there was a mistake. Mm, there seems to be a small mistake. Hosting contains one or multiple characters. Interface Ethernet two slash zero. Okay, so why is that a mistake? Let me check that. Interface Ethernet. Okay, so the interface is wrong. Give me a minute. Okay, so it's supposed to be zero slash zero. My bad. Okay, so I think it's this interface right it's this interface yeah it's not two slash zero so let me put that again okay great so we have a uh, pretty good uh, uh, setup here right we uh, um, let me check if uh, my device my um, Windows machine is good right from the Windows machine what I have done is if you see here I go to my Ethernet change adapter settings and uh, properties you can see I have put the manually put the IP address of 192.1.100.90 right which is basically the same uh, address or it's the basic same subnet which I need right because that's basically my subnet right 192.1.100.0 and I'm using 100.90 to be my um, you know IP address which I'm on very configured so I can check that I can go here and do IP config it's um, config probably yeah so you can see the IP address has 192.1.100.0 100.90 right um, yeah so if you want we can actually test this we can actually ping and see if uh, you know it is able to talk to my gns3 so the if you see the configuration my um, r2 or let's go here so on r2 let's let's ping uh, you know the pc from r2 or we can from the from the pc we can basically ping r2 as well r2 is running 192.1.100.2 right so we could do that i believe that is the ip address 192 100.2 yeah this one so let's see if we can ping from here 192.1.1 right looks good so you got the ping right you can so you're basically able to ping from the PC to uh, my uh, R2 right so I can test it here as well even from R2 if I do a let me clear the screen so if I do a ping to 192.1.100.90 which is my PC you can see that it works great so 
basically I have connectivity and all of that set up now comes the VPN part right so what we are doing first the first kind of VPN which we'll be looking at is basically the IKE VPN IKE V1 which is going to be set up between the R3 and ASA so I've already done a video where I you know did VPNs with ASA but that was more on the lines of side-to-side uh, -side VPNs uh, wherein we were setting up VPNs between the routers but here the interesting part is we are going to set up the VPN between a router and a ASA so the VPN configuration literally goes inside the ASA right so this is going to be our first one between R3 and ASA1 right so how do we do this so we will start with configuring my R3 right so let's go to R3 where is my R3 yeah R3 is here so we are going to configure R3 and we know uh, you know IK1 how it works we have like the phase 1 we have the phase 2 and we're going to use the ACLs and all of that so let's do that it's fun let's go to R3 okay so on R3 so we will start we have done all of this before so I'm going to quickly paste in the commands um, for phase 1 for phase 1 we are basically going to use um, um, isocamp policy right so this is going to be my isocamp policy uh, authentication is pre-shared triple dash is the encryption hash is SHA and group is true okay and uh, for phase 2 is that it no there is one more line in phase 1 which is basically the authentication key right which we have to use so I'm basically using SM, SM key which is Cisco 123 and the address of the peer is 192.1.20.10 because we are setting up uh, the VPN between uh, R3 and ASA1 this side of the interface over here which is 192.1.20.10 right so that's phase 1 phase 2 as we have done before uh, IPsec we're going to use crypto IPsec transform set command we're going to use APC uh, triple dash again and we're going to use MD5 right so that was phase 1 and phase 2 next we need an ACL right uh, access list which will define interesting traffic right so that's this one access list 101 permit IP and we are going to permit the IP from 10.3.3 .3 network to 10.11.11 network right so you see here 10.3 which is 10.3 my 10.3 is going to be over here right the loopback address which I have put is 10.3 and I need to connect or I need to basically connect to my 10.11.0 network right so ideally the VPN is going to be set up between R3 and the outside interface of ASA1 right so the data will be encrypted till here and then you know it will be sent to any of these ports if you require right maybe if you are doing a ping from RVS yes. yeah if you're doing a ping from R3 to R1 that's how it works so the tunnel is actually going to be between the outside interface of R3 and the you know this interface or the outside interface of ASA1 right? it's going to be between that okay so that's uh, the access list we are explicitly defining the interesting traffic from 10.3.3 to 10.11.11 .11 network and uh, crypto map is the next step which is important I'm gonna put a crypto map which basically binds together everything which we have put earlier we're going to match the address 101 we are going to put set the peer and uh, the transform set which we have defined earlier okay now the only last step here is we need to configure this on a particular interface we have to apply this on an interface the interface is going to be uh, the this interface which is ethernet 0 slash 1 as per my topology right so i'm going to use 0 slash 1 and i'm going to put, put this or apply this right so we're done with that let me just quickly take this up and uh, maybe paste it on my device let's just completely copy it control c let's go to my uh, device and we paste it okay so that's done the other side is basically my asa1 so let's go to asa1 where is asa1 here we go so the ASA side of the configuration again pretty much the same let's do it IK1 right so okay there will be slight difference I would say uh, so we will see it together so the phase one so the phase one we did isocamp policy over there here it's going to be a little different we are going to have commands like crypto IKV1 enable and the interface on which we are enabling outside IKV1 policy right is going to be defined authentication pre shared these details should basically match with what we did on R3 right so once we do that the next is um, these are like couple of new commands which you would have not seen before um, 
we create something called as a tunnel group here right on ASA when you're doing the VPN connections on ASA configurations on ASA you need to use this you need to go we need to go with tunnel group 192.1.23.3 right uh, the type is basically IPsec uh, uh, LAN to LAN right that's why you have L2L uh, tunnel group again uh, you're going to put the IPsec attributes IKV1 pre shared key is going to be Cisco123 this should again match what we did on the other side right so once we do that we're going to go with the phase 2 which is again interesting the phase 2 part is ESP triple desk and ESP MD5 HMAC and uh, the access list right because you want the interesting traffic access list 101 permit uh, IP you're going to permit the IP from 1011 network to 103 network right it's going to be the reverse of what we did earlier because this will basically create the tunnel going from ASA towards R3 and uh, the crypto map the crypto map is slightly different here you don't have a global we earlier had sub commands under crypto map but here it's going to be like you know global configuration so the crypto map um, you know we are going to you know call it repeatedly but you know we are going to do the same thing which we did earlier match address with 101 set the peer which is r3 and uh, the transform set which we earlier defined is also mapped to it now once we have done with all this configuration we need to apply it on the interface and now the tricky part is we need to make sure that when you're applying it on the interface the name of the interface should match right so what you exactly have it on the device if you have this in different uh, uh, you know if this was a lower case or something then you need to do the same thing over here as well so make sure that both of them are same uh, that looks good so we can now quickly pick this up and uh, put it on my ASA1 okay have I not configured my ASA1? I have a feeling I have not. Okay, so let's do that then. Uh, let's put the ASA1 configs before this. Okay, there you go. So the ASA1 configs are good. And uh, should I do this again? Let me see. Or maybe let's remove the configuration and do it the other way around. Clear configuration solved. Okay. We cleared the configurations. My bad, I should have done the routing configurations before putting the crypto configurations, right? So let's do that now. Here you go, that's the routing part. And now we will do the crypto part, this here. Okay, that looks good. So we have done the configuration on both my R3 and my R3 and my A1. Uh, ASA1. So let's see if the tunnel works. So we will go to R3. Yeah, so we go to R3. Um, let's do a ping to 10.11.11.1, right? And we're going to source it from 10.3.3.3. Uh, invalid source address did we miss something here I have a feeling we missed something uh, is it uh, Okay, I think we have not put the loopback address, have we, on R3? We have not, yeah. We have not put the loopback address and that's why it was behaving that bad. So let's put the loopback address. Let's, do, let's put the loopback address on my R3. I missed earlier. Let's put the loopback address. Right. There you go and uh, maybe now the ping should work let's take this right 
okay so there you go the ping worked right and uh, we can actually see if uh, you know the tunnel was set up how do we do that show crypto isa camp sa right so you can see the tunnel here and uh, we can also see the phase 2 which is ipsec sa so you can see the packets which i sent earlier using the ping they have been encrypted and decrypted and uh, there is actually a tunnel which got created right so that was one of the vpn which we i wanted to show you right so where uh, uh, we actually established a vpn or a tunnel between uh, r3 and asa1 right and uh, uh, it worked right now the next part is what we are going to do is uh, we will go and build another tunnel but this time we are going to use ikv2 right and the tunnel is going to be between r5 and asa2 right r5 and asa2 great so let's start with configuring my r5 right let's do that you go to my r5 you see that um, we have we don't have a loopback address so let's put a loopback address to start with Let's put a random address 10.99.29.99, which will be the loopback. Let's also put one default, uh, you know, route, which will be towards uh, the internet, which is 192.1.100.2, because that is my R2 router, right? This is my R2 over here, and uh, so that's the default route. Now comes your basic VPN configuration, right? So what do we do? So because it is IKV2 we have a little more number of steps to be done okay so if you remember the first step is we are going to create a proposal so we have done this before in my earlier videos you can check ikv2 i'm going to quickly run down to the configuration here because i don't want to waste time explaining each of it because you have done this before so we'll start with creating a proposal right ikv2 proposal defining all the three parameters next we are going to create a policy okay we create a policy and we attach this proposal which we created just now right and uh, the next is we are going to create a key string the key string will be used for authentication purposes right so key string here one uh, the address is 192.1.30.10 with the two uh, uh, you know uh, uh, passwords uh, which you can use or the keys which you can use the local is going to be cisco 111 and remote is basically this is an advantage of ikv2 it offers you or it gives you a provision to define two different keys right so that's good we are done with key string now we are going to configure the profile okay so when we do the profile match identity remote address uh, is going to be the destination which is my uh, asa2 right which is 192.1.30.10 if you remember this is my asa this this interface right we are basically creating a tunnel between this interface and the you know uh, r5 or 7200 router so again this configuration is very straightforward which we have done you're going to do phase two now right so all of that was phase one so the phase two is uh, cisco ipsec transform set command right we did it earlier as well it's very much the same we are going to do the ACL now because we need to define an interesting traffic which will be actually going through the tunnel and the traffic is going from 10.99 network to 10.40.40 network right and uh, we will uh, sprinkle a bit of Chris, uh, uh, crypto map here crypto map sorry um, and crypto map basically is something which bundles whatever we have written into one single section here so this section basically is you know that we are going to have uh, the match address, the spear command, transform set, ikv2 profile, and all of that, right? And uh, the last part is we are going to apply the crypto map on an interface, and uh, that's good. So we have gone to the interface and we have applied crypto map ABC, right? So that was uh, basically all the configuration that would go under my R5. So I will quickly pick this up, and you know, maybe I think I have to do it from here. Right, so let me just pick this all up and put it on my R5. It's here. Okay. 
so I've applied uh, it on my R5 but we need to do it on the other side as well which is my AC2 let me go and find where my AC2 is yeah here you go so this is my AC2 and I'm gonna put it here right so AC2 okay so we are remember we are doing um, IKV2 on AC2 now right so let's start um, yeah phase 1 again right so phase 1 is going to be IKV2 enable outside and IKV2 policy the triple desk and all of that three algorithms which are required the three main factors encryption integrity and the group hashing basically uh, we're gonna do the tunnel group which I did in my in my case of IKV1 as well it's the same thing it's gonna be tunnel group and you're gonna define now uh, the uh, address uh, 192.1.100.72 right the peer uh, with which you want to establish the tunnel and uh, you're going to define your authentication piece here right use you need to use the same thing so the key which was basically remote over there will be the local here and vice versa right you can figure that out as well let me show it to you so on r5 if you remember there was a key which was remote right cisco one triple two and when you come down to asa that becomes the local right so that's how you figure it out and uh, the phase two part right so uh, we're gonna put um, what do we do now we're gonna put phase two so you know we're gonna put the transform set and all of that right so IP we check proposal we're gonna put the uh, triple dash and md5 so once we are done with that and uh, we will go ahead and define the access list or basically the interesting traffic right the commands are almost the same but there's subtle differences which you can make out though uh, if you look at here the access list is basically flipped from the earlier one because the traffic is going the other way around so that's here and uh, crypto map like I said crypto map basically bundles everything so we are going to put the crypto map which we did like earlier and uh, the last part is we are going to put the entire configuration on my outside interface right remember again the interface name should exactly match with what you have configured Great, so let me pick this up and put it on my ASA2, which I believe uh, is not configured, so I'll have to do it from here. There you go, so that's done. And how do we test this? We go for R5, we go to R5. Let me clear the screen a bit. So my R5. Which is my R5. If you look here, this is my R5 7200. I'm going to do a ping to AC2 and see if uh, the encryption is actually happening, right? So let's do a ping. We're doing a ping, and uh, it's going to be 10.40.40.4, right? Because that's a network which I intend to, you know, establish. Or if you look at here, the access list as well and source we are going to source it from the loopback interface right which is which is which is which is uh, uh, 10.99.99.99 right and let's see if this works yeah there you go it worked now you can also check uh, you know show crypto command okay so it's actually ikv to sa right yeah so there you go we have the um, you know ikv2 set up and working all fine right you can also check um, yeah you can also check the session yeah all of this is good so uh, that was basically what i wanted to cover in these these two pieces now the last part is so let me just recap whatever i did I actually established the IKV1 tunnel between R3 and ASA1 and we checked if it was able to ping and we saw the tunnels were coming up. Next we did a IKV2 tunnel but this time it was between the R5 or the 7200 here and ASA2 and we were able to ping as well across. The last one is we are going to do is we are going to do something called as a web VPN right. So the web VPN is uh, uh, it's going to use SSL basically protocol to set the tunnel up. It's called WebVPN because you can use a browser to connect to the ASA, right? So that's why we have the PC over here. 
So on the PC, we are going to just go on to the browser and uh, you will basically, you know, end up enabling a, uh, the VPN, right? I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, it's also called clientless because you don't want any client on the PC. You just can log into using your browser, the normal browser, Chrome or Firefox or anything. And uh, it is also called as a proxy based VPN, right? So this is how it works. So when the when the PC over here, you know, wants to say establish a VPN connection with R1, right? It will create a SSL connection and generate a HTTP packet. Now this packet will have uh, the PC's address as the source address and the ASS uh, IP which uh, we have set up the tunnel with as the destination IP, right? And all the data which is, you know, which it has to actually send it to R1 will be, will be present inside or will be in the data part of the HTTP packet. Right, the HTTP header is going to have all of these addresses in the outside. Now the ASA when it receives this packet, it forwards you know the packet to R1 as if it as if it it generated on its own, right? So with respect to R1, um, you know the the address of you know PC is not received at all, and uh, hence you know ASA kind of plays a proxy role over here, right? Uh, we will see more of this as I go in configuring. So let's do that. Uh, what do we do to start with? Let's go and configure the first uh, on my AC or do you want me to configure on 3200? Uh, let me check that. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, if you look at my R5, do I already have my, yeah, so my R5 is pretty good, uh, but I think I don't want R5, I'm just going to establish it between my PC and my this thing. Okay, so let's check if my PC is all good and up and running, which means I will have to check a couple of things here. Yeah, so on my PC, I should be actually able to, let's do that. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to see if I have connectivity from my PC to my ASA, right? Because that's where all the magic happens. So this is my PC. I'm going to test. I'm going to ping and see if I can. Uh, I can obviously connect R2, which I already checked. But I need to check if I can connect to 192.1.20.10 over here. Okay, so let's see if I can. So if that doesn't work, then it would be a problem. So then we are going to check that. We are going to ping to 192.1.20.10. Okay, that's not working. So uh, to solve this, I will have to put a route, right? I'll have to put a route. So let's put a route. Uh, the route add is basically going to be 192.1.20.0. That is my network, right? the 20.0 yeah this is my network and uh, with the mask of uh, you know 255.255.255.0 right and uh, the next stop is 192.1.100.2 right so that's going to be my next stop I'm basically making my r2 as my next stop and i'm con configuring a static route towards uh, my asa1 Okay, there you go. That was successful. Now, if I do a ping, do you think it will work? There you go, it's working, right? So now it is able to reach my ASA, which is what all I wanted. Great. So we will go and configure the ASA1 now for web VPN, right? So this is where all the magic happens ASA1. Let's go to ASA1 here. ASA1 is here. Okay, so for web VPN, we will start by um, um, you know going inside the web VPN console, right? So this is going to be the web VPN, and uh, once you are inside web VPN, we are going to enable it on which interface? The outside interface, right? 
and uh, you know we uh, normally disable these uh, any connect essentials because of licensing issues because if it is on then you can't use it so let's disable that and uh, now we are going to create you know for, uh, uh, groups we are going to create groups here so since we are going to use just one group so i'm going to create a group by name sales right and uh, the command basically goes for creating groups as you know sales internal and sales attribute and we are going to put a banner as well so that you know when if a person not authorized to logs in you know they, they will get a banner and uh, since it is uh, ssl and clientless we are going to define it we are going to tell that the protocol tunnel protocol which will be created has to be ssl right so that's what it is doing uh, now we will also need to put some username password because you know you will have to log into the portal which comes up the web web portal right so this is going to be the username password for that and uh, the attributes as such and the VPN group policy is going to be sales we need to put the group to which this belongs so it's sales okay so I think that should be enough for now let's test this and see what happens so let me take this and put it under my ASA1 okay so that's good now what do I do I will have to go down to my uh, you know PC right the PC is over here right in my GNS which I've connected and the PC is over here in the logical topology so I go to the PC I open my browser so I already had opened it earlier so let me like open it again let me close this let me take this and let me try to open it right so it just tells me that you know certificate error but then there you go I have got my SSL you know VPN service and this is the username password which I had configured here right so here if you remember test and Cisco 123 so that's what I need to use here test and Cisco 123 there you go I have logged in continue and uh, here you go so we get the whole screen up here now from the top here you can see there are like four protocols which are supported so these are the natively supported protocols HTTP, HTTPS, CIFS is basically a Microsoft based and uh, FTP right so now if I have to use HTTP probably on one of the routers say R1 so let me first go and configure HTTP server on R1 clear screen right so let's do HTTP on R1 Okay, so this is uh, do I have R1? Yeah, R1 is here. So let's put that right. So let's put HTTP server here. And now that we have put the HTTP server, we can go down to the tab here and mention the IP address of him, the R1, which is 10.11.1. And when you hit enter, you will be prompted with the, the username which we just now set, which is admin and uh, if i'm not wrong it is uh, secret is cisco right there you go so this is literally the uh, r1 router right and i can like literally click on this and get the show tech file for r1 right looks great okay so that is what we did right now we basically you know uh, set up a ssl vpn now now your next question might be what if I want to use any of the protocols which are not mentioned here maybe you want to do telnet maybe you want to do SQL service how would you do that now for doing that we need to use something called as port forwarding right so that's where the port uh, forwarding comes into play so uh, this is how port forwarding works right so let me probably uh, take a couple of them let me put the configuration first and then I will explain so let me log out of this for now okay so port forwarding so let me go back to so this is my ASA1 here okay, so this is the configuration for port forwarding so you're basically telling that um, uh, port for you know do the port forwarding for the group sales right here and if this is the actual service which you're looking for right if it is 1521 which is SQL service or if you're looking for telnetting to 
probably R1, right, or uh, you know, SSHing into one more device, right. We are basically telling, um, um, so there will be like a Java in interpreter, right, there will be a Java interpreter, uh, or you call Java redirector basically, right. So when you, when you shoot up this portal, it will redirect you or it will tell you that you need to use, um, you know, a different port to reach that. It will tell you that you have to use port number 29001 to, to get to this service. You need to use this particular port for this service. So that's because the port is getting forwarded, we are basically calling this as a port forwarding uh, mechanism to achieve that. So this is mainly for those services, you know, which are apart from those four default services which are available, right? So now if I, then you define obviously the group policy and, uh, you know, attach these forward values to the group, right? So if I take this and put it up, I can show you to you how it looks. Okay. So now if I go back to, sorry. Yeah, if you go back here, I'll probably lock. Yeah, so this is uh, test and uh, Cisco one, two, three, continue. And uh, again, right, HTTP, HTTPS, um, all of this, but let's go to application process. And um, if I do something like start applications, it's going to, you know, open the uh, Java redirector, but you know, for this to work, we need to have like this explicit version of Java. It's kind of like old, uh, but you can read it on the right side as well. You know, it tells that you need to, um, um, you know, run a Java version, which is 1.4, right? And this is how it works. So basically, uh, we have done, so once once we have the Java redirector, it will start showing up these ports, right? Which we actually configured here. It will, it will ta start telling you, that if you want to reach this particular service, then you need to use this port. If you want to reach a telnet on this particular device, then you need to use this port. So it redirects, you know, all these services onto these new ports. And you can, uh, if you have a putty, right? If you have a putty on your local system over here, you can use that putty to probably do one of these telnet or SSH using the new port numbers, which are suggested by the Java redirector, right? So, that is all which I wanted to show you guys. We did three different types of VPNs just to recollect. We did IKV1 between R3 and ASA1. We did IKV2 between uh, ASA2 and you know, R5 or 7200. And we ended up with the SSL VPN or a clientless you know, web VPN, which you can directly you know, get into using your browser. And we did that between the PC over here and ASA1, right? Hope you guys liked it and uh, have a nice day.